Hey everyone, welcome back, and today I'm going to be talking about my League starter for 316. I'm going to be playing a champion Toxic Rain build, I'm going to be going over the tree and how it's going to work. I have a leveling guide and I have a document as well to tell you exactly how to level, so stay tuned if you want that. I'll be leaving all those links in the description down below. So yeah, uh, this build has actually turned out really well. I was theory crafting before the passive trees came through, or like the passive tree changes came through anyway, because I wanted to play this. And uh, the new passive tree has made this build really, really good. And I'll tell you guys how. So first off, I just want to go over the basic stats we have. And uh, I'll go into how we're getting so much damage from this. And it's not from scuffed or like, you know, uh, gear that's really messed up. Like all this stuff is not insane gear. Uh, it's just like the core stats you need on, on the items. And uh, the reason I don't have any resists on the gear is because putting like individual resists on the gear doesn't make sense. I'd rather just put that as a separate stat and you guys would have to look for that on the gear once you buy it. So I'll show you all of the config later. But first of all, I just want to say this build is really, really strong, guys, and I highly recommend it. And uh, yeah, so with this build, we have, uh, you know, 18,000 evasion rating without flasks um, over here. So let me just show you. We don't have any flasks on right now. And we have, uh, you know, 55 of chance, which is, you know, simulating flesh and stone pretty much. And we have 8,000 armor and 58% fizz reduction, which is really, really good. Uh, and then we actually managed to get 100% spell suppression chance. So we actually go a bit out of our way to actually achieve this. Uh, we take reflexes, which gives 10%. Uh, we get uh, this life wheel, or not life wheel, but this other wheel here with the mastery to give even more suppression. And then finally, we take even more suppression with this node over here. I think spell suppression is a very important stat, guys, and I wouldn't miss out on it. That's why I went out of my way to get it. If you guys don't like it, you can just ditch it and uh, be squishier and go for more damage. But I don't think that's recommended. Um, and I just want to say first here, guys, that I got this uh, inspiration from this build from Darky. He's a hardcore player and uh, all the tree, all the calculations are based off what he's done. So I'm not trying to scuff the build in any way I, I believe he knows what he's doing and I'm just going to uh, leave it at that so yeah um, and then we have uh, 70 move speed without quicksilver which I'd say is you know decent enough and yeah we end up with around 4 million dps um, and now you're going to be probably really mad at me because I enabled frenzy charges and you're like, oh, how do you, uh, f you know, get frenzy charges? Okay, so how do you get frenzy charges in a boss fight? It's tedious, but this is soft core at the end of the day and we're trying to milk the damage as much as possible. And uh, yeah, frenzy, we're going to be self-casting it uh, in boss fights and for clearing, we're going to have blood rage anyway. So that's going to give us frenzy charge generation. And if you don't like that, if you don't want to run it, even if you untake uh, the frenzy charges, you still have 3.7 million DPS. So just make sure that, uh, that's fine. So the reason I have to, um, calculate, uh, this uh, stuff here in this custom modifiers is because this is actually not being calculated. Uh, if you see here, um, it's all in red and it doesn't add up and also in the config I have to tick fortify because uh, that doesn't get calculated either um, so it would simulate that uh, and yeah so there's I just want to quickly go over the other calculations here so it's zero step hasn't been changed on POB yet so I minus the dodge and added the spell suppression it's going to have the masteries there's one mastery that isn't getting calculated which is the aura effect one uh, and we're going to be taking that over there and then um, and then resist I just put here that you're going to have to get on your gear. I just put it here so that I don't have to put it on the gear in the POB. Um, but make sure that you do go for resist guys. And we are going to go for chaos res because it scales our damage as well. Uh, we're taking this node over here which gives 1% uh, dot per 4 chaos res. And you want to get basically as much chaos res as possible. I just put the cap here because... Um, that's probably a more realistic amount and if you get less that's fine as well but just do uh, invest in chaos res okay so that's the basis of the build uh, uh, like how we get these stats here I'll go over the items in a minute and uh, of course we're using uh, focus ballista and I just want to say that uh, the tree has basically increased this build's damage by a lot um, so let me go over all the masteries we take um, so we take bow mastery for phasing. I think this is essential on toxic rain and we don't need to run a quartz flask with that. Uh, next we have a uh, more skill effect duration. This is completely insane. I'm really surprised this is even a mastery. And then obviously we take the exceptional performance. Uh, we go ahead and we take the 
additional 10% chance to suppress damage if your boots, helmet and gloves have evasion, which they do. Uh, we have the life mastery with vitality, increased mana res reservation efficiency. This is really, really important because we're running vitality at level 20. Uh, we take this because we need, we want to run Skitterbot's vitality and malevolence, and this makes the mana issues a lot less. And we also get some damage for it as well. So that's really, really nice. Uh, and then we go ahead and take a 20% increased effect of Withered on this uh, Wasting node, which is really good. This also gives Chaos Res on the big node, so that's really insane. Uh, then we have Blood Drinker here, and uh, we take the 50 life mastery. We go up here and we take the skill effect duration damage over time mastery, which is really good. And method or growth and decay is really, really insane. Uh, we take another spell suppression mastery, which is you take 50% reduced extra damage from suppress, suppress critical strikes. I think this is really, really good. Uh, and then finally, we have this one, which I talked about earlier, which is chaos damage over time multiplier per chaos res on atrophy, which they actually changed to have skill effect duration now. So this node is insane, and that's why we path all the way up there. Okay, so now that we've covered the tree, uh, I'll cover the leveling a bit later. So stay tuned for that if you want to know about the leveling. But uh, now we'll go over the skills. So we got a main toxic rain setup, which is going to be uh, faster attacks for the attack speed. We lack a lot of attack speed on champions, so we really need it. And it's actually one of the best damaging gems anyway. We run efficacy, uh, vicious proj, void manipulation, and we actually run life tap uh, because we're going to have mana issues. And with life tap, we don't because we're going to be out regening the cost of the life that's going to be used. So that's completely fine. As you can see here, we have um, 378 life regen, which, you know, it's it's going to be out regening. If you times 3.57 by 79, it's going to be less than that. So, yeah. Now uh, we got the ballista set up. So this is more of a utility focused setup, but it's still really, really important. And it actually gives a lot of damage. If you see, if I untick this, we're only at 3 million damage. So this almost, you know, gives us a really decent amount of damage. And we're also applying withering touch with it, which will allow us to hit 15 wither stacks, hopefully. Um, and yeah, that's the, that's the goal there. And the reason you put five here is because we're going to have five ballistas and this is how you cal calculate ballista DPS. At least, um, that's what I've seen on other people's builds doing. Um, and we use focus ballista as well so that we get the, uh, you know, the bonuses from it, the attack speed and everything like that. Um, and then we have efficacy and it's, it's more of a utility setup, but it does do a lot of damage anyway. And uh, I think if you, uh, uh, like, I put 21 Toxic Rain here, and you might think, oh, that's unreasonable leak start, but it's really not. You just need to level Toxic Rains in your offhand while you're playing, and you just start corrupting them when they hit level 20. If you're blasting, um, you know, higher tier maps, it's going to be completely fine. Uh, obviously, you don't need 21 Toxic Rain until higher maps anyway, like until end game, end game content. So you don't worry about this. Um, you know, even if we lower these levels like to 20, it's it's not going to change the damage that much. OK, so I just put it here because I think personally, for me, it's not that bad to get that. But don't worry if you don't have a level 21 Toxic Rain, it's not a big deal. OK, uh, then we run Blood Rage, Frenzy, which is really good, Malevolence and Skitterbots. And we actually use Skitterbots to apply um, Despair with uh, a Profane Proxy. Usually this ring isn't expensive. So, yep. Uh, then we use a Val Molten Shell setup with cast when damage taken, increased duration with a level 20 vitality, which doesn't need to be linked here, but I just put it here because it's, um, you know, the best place I could fit it in here uh, for the build. Next up, we have Flame Dash, Withering Step, and Life Tap. We put it on Life Tap because we don't want mana issues when we're placing down our totems, the, and uh, we don't want to be running out of mana and not being able to Flame Dash. That's going to be horrible. And then Define Span is also in the helmet, but you don't want to link it to uh, Life Tap or anything like that. And Define Spanner we get for free, as you can see, it gives a decent amount of evasion and armor, which is, you know, really, really nice. And then finally, Despair in the ring, uh, which would give us a lot of damage. If you see here, it lowers our damage a lot if we don't have it. So, yeah, now we'll go into the items. Uh, let me explain all the items over here. Now, uh, just to let you guys know, I don't actually have time to test this build, um, but I've seen other people play at last league and the league before, and it's been completely fine. It's a very solid build, and it was using the Gauntlet as well. So don't be afraid um, of this build not being good. It's uh, Toxic Rain is known as a very good league starter anyway. You can't really go wrong with this build. So first of all, we have this bow. Now, to craft this, you actually want to use a Fossil Combination. So the fossil combination you want to use with this bow is a corroded, a jagged, and a metallic that will give you um, 
a really good chance of getting this bow. You would get plus one, plus two, and then you just craft the chaos damage over time multiplier. Very, very easy bow to get. And I even put it on short bow for you guys because short bow is obtained from porcupine cards and it would be very uh, easy to get this bow. Now, there is one slight issue, guys, um, with this bow. And that's that the eye level actually needs to be not 50. Um, so that might be a problem for a short bow. And I did uh, oversee this. Um, but yeah, you're going to actually lose a level on this bow, unfortunately. Um, but there's not really much you can do about that. I'll just adjust it right now. But yeah, basically, you're not going to be able to get plus two because the minimum eye level for plus two bow gems is 64. And this bow is going to be an eye level 50 from the porcupine cards. Um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. And I also have a end game starter bow, which is a very common bow to make. Um, and I recommend getting this as soon as possible because if you see the damage difference, it's, it's 1 million DPS, right? So <laughs> it's uh, really, really important that you, um, that you get that. For the quiver, we're running a uh, damage over time multiplier with life. And obviously you want to get resist here as well. Right, uh, and then now we're using a Devoter's Devotion. Now, the reason we're using this helmet is because it gives a bunch of armor, a bunch of evasion, and it gives Chaos Res and movement speed and attack speed. Like, it's a, such a good helmet, and uh, if it's too expensive at the start, you can literally just run a rare, but you definitely want to get a Devoter's because it gives you move speed, it gives you some more survivability, it gives you attack speed, and Chaos Res. It's like way more than you can ask for. It's such a good helmet in uh, for this build. Next up, we're using a Cherry Bim's Malefilance. Elephants, sorry, I might say it completely wrong, but basically we have increased chaos damage. Uh, we have life and this just gives a lot of arm and evasion as well. That's the reason we use it. Now you're probably wondering, uh, getting two six links early is very not leak star friendly. Um, you would ditch efficacy. I know you lose a lot of damage, but you need to be able to do that because you're not going to be able to have two six links that early. Like the maximum you can probably get early is a, uh, a bow and a five link right that's pretty reasonable a six link short bow and a five link um cherry bims um but that's completely fine uh and then once you get the six link obviously your damage will go up and you're not going to need the six link until later anyway so don't get too worried about that but i just put it there for so that um people know what to do after they get the six link um so yeah i just want to just emphasize that i'm sorry if it's not completely completely leak start like early early leak start but it's it's like the aspirational uh thing and i do have a leveling tree as well um so yeah uh just use a five link until you get a six link here as simple as that but the six link that you do want to worry about is the porcupine card it's very important that you you do that um you know it's it's just essential okay so Next up, we have the Armor Evasion Gauntlets, and you want to get Hunter Influence and basically reforge Chaos on Harvest or use Aberrant Fossils and you, until you hit uh, Life Resist and Chaos Damage over Time Multiplier. That's very important as well. Um, these type of gloves will be really expensive early, so you don't want to try and make them yourself. Uh, Zeri Step, obviously, is going to be really nice. High amount of evasion, spell suppression, and life. This might be not as expensive because I don't think a lot of people are scaling spell suppression at the moment. So don't worry too much about the price of these. And then uh, we have uh, an amulet here, which is the same process as the gloves. You want to uh, use aberrant fossils or reforge chaos with a hunter amulet until you hit something like this. Uh, and we anoint corruption and you might think, oh, anoint early is, you know, but it's a very, 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 very cheap anoint. So don't worry. Uh, two black oils and crimson is very cheap. You can easily buy those oils early uh, for not too expensive. And you may even get them yourself. They're not very rare in yellow maps anyway. Um, so, yeah. And then we have uh, the profane proxy. Uh, this is usually a cheap ring, probably like 5C maximum early on. And then uh, we have a ring here with life and strength. You're going to need some strength um, because we run high st level strength gems like Vitality and Molten Shell and stuff like that. So you are going to need some strength on here. And make sure you obviously, on guys, on this gear, you're going to look for on the res the life and resists, you know, and chaos res. That's like the important stats to look for. And then uh, this belt over here, uh, we actually craft the arm in evasion because I think the craft is actually really good um, and it's not expensive as well. I think it's like you only have to farm Jun for a bit. Um, and in my experience, it's very easy to get this. Uh, and then you obviously want life and resists. Uh, and then we have some flasks. So we have a life flask um, with anti-ignite. Um, you probably want an anti-bleed. I had an oversight. I thought I was going to get corrupted blood immunity, but I didn't. So let me just change this to bleed. Um, because you're going to need bleed immunity. 
Uh, and then we have a reflexes jade flask, a iron skin granite flask. As you can see, this pumps our um, our armor and evasion a lot. So you definitely want that. And then we have a quick silver of adrenaline. Uh, this is not the buffed adrenaline, so you're going to be even faster. And um, if you think alchemist is really hard to get, then that's fine. You can just ditch that stat on there. Uh, it's not that important. And then obviously we have an attack speed silver flask. Um, this is really good uh, as well. So the one thing you're probably wondering is how do you get freeze immunity? We're just using Brian King and it hasn't been changed on POB, but Brian King, uh, the Corrupter Adiac uh, is going to change from you cannot be uh, frozen if you've been frozen recently to just you cannot be frozen. And I think this is usually a monster in yellow maps from the, the current Atlas. So you don't have to worry about um, that and you will just run an anti-freeze flask until you get that uh, Brian King node. And then finally, we have one jewel uh, with four. I know they buffed the chaos damage over time multiplier, but I just put it a low roll just to, to not scuff it too much. And uh, we have some life as well. So yeah, uh, those are all the items covered. And we have like 5.4k life. It's not too high, but it's not too low either. Uh, and then we'll finally go over the configuration. So what I've seen on all the Toxic Green POBs is that five with the totem setup is a reasonable amount to have. Um, because you do get uh, that amount of overlap. Uh, Frenzy charges, obviously, I told you how we're going to be generating that. We do have life tap. Um, so yeah, we're going to be using that. Uh, we do have fortify or fortification, but there's no way to actually add that. We have, um, we, I've saw, it's seen on uh, on POBs as well that they put 15 wither stacks when you run withering touch support. Now, there is some debate on this, whether this is actually accurate, but I think it is. Um, and I do trust Ducky. Uh, to calculate his builds properly so I don't think that's scuffed but it might be um, and yeah that is pretty much it it's on Cyrus of course and uh, there's no other thing to really take here all right guys now I want to go over the ascendancy so we take the unstoppable hero uh, and then we go into fortitude and now this is still like the similar way that fortify works it says you have 20 fortification and the one fortification gives you 1% less damage taken so you basically get you know 20% less damage taken which is really really nice uh, we take Conqueror because it gives us less damage taken. And it's actually kind of good for Ballistas as well because we don't scale any defenses for the Ballistas. So uh, this will give them a bit of defense because we'll be taunting the enemies and then those enemies will do 20% less damage to the Ballistas. So that's really, really good. And we also take 10% reduced damage if you taunted an enemy recently. And then finally, we take Inspirational for our damage. It gives us 30% increased effect of non curse auras and it also gives Banner skills have no reservation. So that allows us to run Deviance Banner for free as well, which is really, really nice. Okay, so for the leveling guides, uh, we start off here and we actually use Shattering Steel. I have a written guide on how to do this completely. Uh, and I'll show you guys that as well in a second. And I'll leave all the links in the description. But yeah, at level 20, you want to take these nodes. At level 39, you want to take these nodes. And we take some Masteries as well. Uh, we take the Flask Mastery to remove a random elemental ailment when you use a Mana Flask because getting Freeze Immunity in Axe is really difficult unless you roll it on a Flask and this in this case you don't have to and getting Frozen in some areas in Axe is really annoying. And then we take the 50 Life Mastery as well but you don't really have to take that if you don't want. I think it helps a lot though. And then uh, we take some la more life, some damage. Uh, at level 39 you're going to transition to Toxic Rain anyway. You would start with Shattering Steel. Uh, and then you go to level 58. As you can see, we go up here, we take some more damage. Uh, we go more life, more damage as per usual. And then finally, level 82 is, um, you know, the really good thing about this leveling tree is that you don't need to respect anything apart from one flask mastery, uh, which is really good. Um, so yeah, that is our current uh, setup here. And I'll show you guys the written guide as well. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.